decision, and I think he was right. Uh, it's a tragedy for him. It's a great loss for Parliament. He is a man of great integrity, of great experience. Uh, he's a delightful person. We were in cabinet together, I know him well. I've uh, known him for many years. And he's also very clever. This was uh, uh, an error of judgment, as he has conceded. And it is very sad. I mean, he hasn't done anything illegal. He hasn't done anything which is technically wrong. But it was clearly an error of judgment. Well, yes, and, and it's still being looked at, isn't it? He does deny wrongdoing, as you say. He says he may have made errors of judgment. But do you think he's damaged the party at all? I don't think he's damaged the party. I think that uh, we've had Jack Straw also caught in the same uh, sting. Uh, so it, it, this is not a matter of party politics one way or another. But it is very sad. Well, yes, and whether ultimately found not to have broken any rules, would you agree that it looks bad when you see Sir Markham saying things like he had lots of time on his hands, he described himself as self-employed, uh, he says no one pays me a salary. That kind of thing doesn't look good, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't look good, and I think he recognises that. Uh, but it is, it is still very sad. But uh, having time on his hands, I mean, that is absolutely true. I mean, being a member of parliament, a constituency member of parliament, although it's an important job, is not a full-time job. And indeed, the proof of that is that ministers are also members of parliament. They do both jobs. When I was Chancellor of the Exchequer, I had one of the heaviest workloads in the country. And yet I continued as a constituency member and, and I don't think anybody said that I wasn't doing my job there. So y you do, if you're just a constituency member, uh, have time on your hands. And if you do use that uh, in order to further your experience of the world, that's good for Parliament. People complain about the Westminster hothouse. So you want people who are in contact with the real world. But he was a, a chairman of a very important committee considering very important issues about national security. Yes, and that's why it was an error of judgment. What's your, stand, what's your stand on whether or not MPs should have other sources of income? Do you think that that is part of the issue here? I, th I think it's, uh, I think it's a far from part of the issue. It's an irrelevance and it shouldn't be brought in. Uh, the, the, the different countries have different uh, views. In France, where I live, if you are a member of parliament is appointed to be a minister, he has to resign as member of parliament to devote himself full-time as a minister because they think a minister has to be full-time. We don't take that view, and I think you need to look at this. We think that it is good for a minister to be in touch with the real world, to be in touch with the people, to look after the people in his own constituency. That makes him a better minister. And so, uh, and in the same way, it is good for members of the parliament, if they wish to, to, to be active in what you might call the real world. But don't you think many members of the public expect their MPs to do a full-time job, especially when they're getting a salary of £67,000? That's not the point. They, they expect them to do a good job. And I'm sure Malcolm Rifkin always did a very good job, and most members of Parliament, and you can go up and down the country and you'll find constituents who know them know this, most members of Parliament do a very good job.